How is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. Today we're going to do another episode of Doc Talk. Um, essentially, I drink cold beer while I talk to fishermen that are on and in the water every single day and just kind of talk about what's been going on. You guys seem to like this episode. Well, the first time we did it was last month, uh, and you guys seem to like it, so we're going to make it a monthly thing. Um, and yeah, that's the gist of it. Uh, we got, I've got some fishermen coming down. I think there's three or four today. I had five scheduled. One uh, had some stuff come up, but... Um, that's just the nature of being a fisherman. Some days run, run longer than you plan. But um, that's the gist of what we're gonna do. First and foremost, a huge thanks to the docks on Stock Island. That is the restaurant behind me. They are lending me the space to do these videos. If you're looking for a place for a cold drink, a nice fancy cocktail, a nice fancy dinner, or an appetizer, um, you just wanna come down and see the fish come in. They've got tarpon, lobster tanks, all kinds of cool stuff. One of our favorite restaurants. There's a good chance you uh, may catch Madeline and myself here. Um, in the afternoon during happy hour, the docks on Stock Island, come check it out. And if you do, look at me, get the figs in a blanket. If you've got a sweet tooth on the appetizer side, get the figs in a blanket. You'll thank me later. But um, right now, I am waiting for some of the other captains to show up. Um, I'll talk a little bit, I think, I'll talk a little bit about what I've been seeing in the water. I had a dive captain scheduled, but I don't know if he's going to make it. I think he ran late today uh, on his trip. But um, the diving side, so we are going to follow, or we're going to cover uh, March, what we've been seeing in March. A little bit more of the same from February. There's still some Wahoo lingering around. Um, lobster season officially closed on April 1st. There's plenty of lobster around, but unfortunately they did close that down. Um, but like I said, out in the blue water, we've been seeing Wahoo, some yellow jacks, the African pompano have been starting to heat up. They actually um, really get fired up this time of year, uh, along with the permit. They start to spawn on the deep wrecks and some of the real deep ledges and reefs. Um, you'll see them in big, big schools. The permit will pile up, I mean, by hundreds if not thousands on the wreck so lots of permits and ap's around um, the permit because they do spawn um, they actually closed them down i believe don't quote me on it i believe it was april 1st i normally don't shoot them anyways but i think they closed the permit down on april because of the spawn um, inshore on the reef inshore lots of mutton snappers around the spawn for them is going to be heating up here soon um, they've really been really been getting going yeah, even in the shallow water 20 to 30 feet a lot of muttons around um, Yellow jacks on the reef, that's kind of a year-round thing. Uh, in the wintertime, we see some really, really big ones uh, come through, and that's that's been no different uh, this winter. Um, oh, we've actually been seeing a few cobia. Madeline got her first cobia. There's been a, a decent amount of cobia around. Hopefully you can still hear me. We've got a plane taken off. Excuse the noise. We're in a working uh, marina on the airports right there. Um, big mangrove snappers uh, on some of the deeper stuff, deeper wrecks, deeper ledges. Um, but yeah, that's about it for the dive report, I think. I'm trying to think what else I've been doing. I believe that is all. Um, on the diving side of things, April, you expect kind of more of the same. We're going to start making that transition uh, towards some of the summer stuff. Hopefully the wind will start dying here soon. Um, late April, early May. We've got grouper opening May 1st. That is a huge one. Everyone gets really excited about that. Um, it's one of my favorites. It's a, it's a holiday for me. So. Um, but I think that's all I have for the my dive inside. Uh, like I said, I've got a couple center console guys. I had a I, I had about five people scheduled. We'll see who shows up. Um, I, I did cover my bases last time. It was a learning experience. We wanted to see uh, just kind of how it went and get the flow of this. I did contact a flats guide, a dive boat, and then a couple more center console guys. So I want to cover try and cover all bases. So you know, if you are coming down to visit and you want a fishing report, uh, hopefully these will be helpful for some of you guys. But um, like I said, we'll see who shows up, and uh, we'll do what we can do. So how's it going, my brother? It's Captain going. DJ Barrios. Um, you guys doing? Well, I was going to say with Rough Shot Charters, but are you running charters anymore? I'm um, doing a little bit. A little bit here and there? Yeah, just okay. if I have their, if just I can fit it in. kind of exclusively cherry picking? Yeah. Well, cool. Um, and you're running private boats now, yeah? All private. All private. Um, DJ's been a good friend of mine since, wow, you were 18 probably? Yeah, or maybe, so. maybe even younger. Yeah? <laughs> He's been born and raised down here fishing this place forever since he could walk, so. He knows a lot and has done a lot and seen a lot for his age. Very impressive. Um, what have you been up to? What have you been doing? I've been seeing sailfish? Mainly sailfish right now, yeah. yeah. All the big boats are down here this time of year, so it's all all they really want to do is sailfish. A yeah. little bit of bottom fishing if the weather's a little bit off, but mainly sailfishing. You know, we got a couple big tournaments coming up, so. Yeah. Just you got And you have a captain's meeting tonight, right? Yeah, we is got that, the, the Viking challenges going on. Is that for sailfish? Yeah. Exclusively? Yep. Oh, wow. There is like little meat divisions and mm -hmm. stuff, but it's mainly mainly sailfish and um are you picking up anything else my plane's flying are you picking up anything else while you're sailfishing um or kings or 
like two weeks ago, we had, you know, it was plenty of tuna action. Um, I fished over the weekend, both days. We had seven sails and every tuna we hooked got eaten by a shark, except for one. <laughs> so That sounds pretty standard. Yeah, I mean, marking them is solid, but every time you hook one, it's, yeah. you know, we'd, I'd mark them. I tell the clients, I'm like, get ready. You know, you're probably about to get a bite, tuna, shark. Oh, wow. So, but I yeah, had... definitely some kings. Uh, we missed a Wahoo that day as well. That was pretty cool. It's like right on the short bait, 50 feet behind the boat. I'm looking back there, 40 pound king, like bumps the goggle eye off his nose. Literally yeah. two seconds later, wahoo just aired out. I'm like, I tried to lock it up and reel. There ain't good. nothing like a top water wahoo bite. Just, they look so cool coming out that deep blue and the stripes all fired it up. It was like picture perfect. But oh, you know, man. we're fishing fluoro, so it's there's wow. some chance yeah. of yeah. landing yeah. For it. For sales, you gotta. Um, well, I guess I, I was kind of gonna ask you about bait. I know everyone's been struggling on the filters. What do you guys even been just, able to get goggles? Or you uh, just buying them? Buying them? Yeah. Have, I mean, you try, have you tried any threadies or anything on the threadies, factories? They've been pretty good. I know it's slowed down this week, but all the boats are in town beating up yeah. on them. So, yeah. But yeah, I mean, the factories are the rocks in the Gulf, you know, yeah, little wrecks. For sure. They were pretty solid back there yesterday. That's awesome. So what? Um, so this tur this tournament this weekend, what's a two day thing? Yeah, it's two days. Uh, Thursday, Friday. It's just a fun. There's yeah. no money involved in it. It's just all. The, oh really? Yeah, it's just all the Viking owners. It's strictly Viking boats. They're just running out of stuff to do. <laughs> this is actually the 10th year. It's 10 year anniversary. That's, awesome. That's actually pretty impressive. <laughs> 56 boats this year. Is there really? Yeah, record. Holy moly. Next weekend is the money one, you know, the one that Bryce is putting on. Yeah. So it's trying yeah, to bring yeah. back the sailfish championship kind of thing down I know, here. man. They just get they get so fired up this time of year. So the wind picks up and just stirs the bait up. There's ballyhoo stacked up on the reef. There's all kinds of bait. And you just go out there and I mean they're just on the surface tailing on a nice windy day yeah if you get the right conditions so I've seen a few tailors this year but not many so I don't I mean you know me I'm, I'm a meat eater and a diver more than anything um, I don't really sailfish that often so like what is your ideal wind do you want a south east. wind east 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 wind and uh, what are they doing are they work in you work in color changes the deep side shallow it side, all depends. depends lately it's all been just blue water blue water so it's wherever you see and just bait driving and, around sighting yeah. them looking for bait looking for just mainly kite fishing stuff you know, stirred just, up a lot of sitting and waiting. A lot of waiting. We haven't had any like heavy because I know it was last year or two years ago you guys did put up mm -hmm. like crazy numbers in one day. Yeah, I've only like I said we haven't really had much current down here, so yeah, we need that east tide to get them to start tailing. But they've had it up the road, so hopefully it pushes. Do you in. want now when you're sailfishing? Do you want current? Yeah, you want east tide, east wind. You know, stacking it up against okay. each other, okay. building up all that bait. That makes sense. That makes sense. And you that's when they get up top and start riding the waves. <laughs> It's always wild. Doing. Like every now and again, I'll be diving on the reef and we'll be in like 35 feet and you just turn around and there's a sailfish sitting behind you. Yeah. Just like, hey, what are you doing? And you're just trying to eat ballyhoo and stuff. It's so wild. And then the water gets that like foggy, like uh, cloudy neon blue, mm -hmm. green. And then they, they're just like, they stand out like a sore thumb because they're like, well, like jet black. Trash bags. Yeah. So they actually, they do. Yeah. They look like big trash bags. Um, but you haven't been doing much on the bottom fishing. The mutton uh, should be heating up soon. Yeah. The, the, they've been pretty good in the Gulf. Um, well, again, sharks just sharks absolutely bad, killing man. us. I mean, the other day we're back there and we, they're right there in the chum like yellowtails, and everyone you look is a shark, shark, shark. Wow. It's to the point where you don't even want to you know, just move. How deep are you? Are you like deep golf or like on the, on Any, the shallow side? Really anywhere from off? 30 to 60. Yeah. Wow. I don't really fish too much of the deeper stuff. I don't yeah. Have you had any cobia rolling while doing that chumming? No, no, no cobias. I've been, I heard they're hit or miss. We saw a couple. A couple weeks ago diving but um some guys are just i guess it's just, it's just luck of the draw you're landing right on top yeah. of them and then some all the ones i've seen have been on the shrimp boats yeah i got you that was three weeks ago or so every boat had you know one or two on it but real real lazy real finicky yeah if you're not there early they're already full i think by the time you get there you know from oh yeah they're just dumping yeah dumping you show up trash. at one o'clock they're like yeah <laughs> they're just swimming around digesting yeah. come right up to the boat you throw a live bait out and they don't even Nothing. That's so crazy. Jig, bait, so crazy. Then, so what you got coming up for April? I mean, it's more of the same. This is really when that sailfish is kind of prime time. Yeah, right it's now. More of the same stuff. I'm pretty much nonstop. We got Viking this weekend. Then we get ready for Bryce's uh, that sailfish tournament next weekend. And then the weekend after, as soon as that tournament's done, I load up the other boat I take care of Sunday, and we head up Monday to Fort Pierce for a kingfish tournament. Oh wow! So it's that's pretty cool. Three weekends in a row. Of, so DJ's been doing a ton of ton of tournament fishing and um how old are you now 25 25 
and you you guys were the first boat back to back wahoo what was it what was yeah it? yeah the west end wahoo tournament first boat back to back uh first place finish in the wahoo tournament 25 years old this guy's running the boat unbelievable um pretty cool man proud of you it was a good time of course we catch an 85 pounder two days before the tournament. yeah i need to throw that photo up yeah. it's like pre-fishing he says he's like the day before it was 85 he said mm -hmm. <laughs> but they ended up still still putting it in the bag yeah um and a lot of people like say that pre-fishing thing you know i i have mixed feelings about it i do too but for instance that tournament it was very slow and boats showed up like you know two days before and we just we're just going to get ready and go yeah. fish the tournament but we were there all week and it paid off, you know, we knew, yeah. we knew where there was a couple of like resident fish hanging and so, there was not a red hot bite by any means. Yeah. So if you, I know a lot of you guys, I had someone uh, leave a comment last time. I was like, I had to look up half the terms you guys were saying because it was all like slang lingo. Pre-fishing, if you're wondering what pre-fishing is, uh, you go to the location a few days before the tournament and just work the kinks out a little bit, get everyone in the groove, but you also want to try and locate fish and see what's been going on with the conditions you're doing where the rips are, where the, the current is, where the bait is, stuff like that. So um, they caught an 85 pound wahoo the day, the, the, first, the day before, right? No, two, or two, days, two before? days before. The, before the tournament. We didn't they, fish they the next day. We were they, like, <laughs> yeah. Might as well not, yeah. we got it figured out. But they ended up still winning. Uh, it was the first boat back to back ever? Uh, in that tournament, yeah. In that tournament? I don't it's know. It's pretty wild. I don't know that's, how long I mean, in any tournament, on. that's impressive back to back, yeah. back to back winners. But. Especially in a you know, different country. Basically. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely not in your home waters yeah that's that's impressive at all to do that the guys that travel and tournament fish i just yeah that's so impressive i mean a lot of them hire local guys and they've been doing it for so long you get a doubt in but excuse me that's a whole different story but um yeah i mean that's why i'm going up to fort pierce a week early i've i've fished, oh yeah i have fished palm beach a couple times you know it's you run pretty much anywhere from but what i find so interesting is is it Fort Pierce where the winning fish is always like 30 pounds or something small? No, they there's get been, bigger ones up there? they've had a lot of big fish recently. Where's the spot? Or maybe I'm thinking of something else. I thought there was one tournament where the winner is always like 30 pounds. Uh, I know like the King of the Beach, the one on St. Pete, where there's like a hundred uh, boats, but they can only go so far out. Side, yeah. Because the winning fish down here, the Kingfish Mayhem tournament, is normally somewhere in the 50s, sometimes yeah. 60s. This year it was slow, but typically if you're not in the 50s, you don't even. Just, I find it fascinating how, how much the, the size of the fish vary, especially in the Kingfish. And they're just a short short ways up the road. Yeah, we actually caught a 40 pounder yesterday catching blue runners <laughs> for the tournament. Were you jigging? <laughs> yeah, I just threw the jig out there. <laughs> we were getting destroyed on the Sabikis. I'm a, like, tr yeah, a trophy fish like most yeah. people would mount while catching bait. That's so funny. You can't plan it sometimes. Probably won't catch one in the tournament now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, well, well, shoot. I appreciate you coming by. Anything come to mind? It's all good. You ain't been diving, huh? No. I haven't, I haven't seen the boat leave the slip in a dude, while. Dude, I'm losing it. I've been in the office making merch. You guys better enjoy this merch I've been making. We're coming out with a crap ton of stuff. I've been in the office like, see how, see how tall my mustache is? I tell you, no, I haven't been diving because I have to trim it down for the mask. Yeah, usually it's halfway down there. The boat hadn't moved. That thing probably doesn't even work anymore. It's been like, that's the longest that boat has sat since I probably bought it from Zach in 2015 or 16. That's how I feel about my boat right now. I'm like, poor thing. <laughs> I just look at it behind the house every day. I'm like, it's just like, come on, DJ. <laughs> yeah. What are we doing over here, man? Like, <laughs> motor probably don't even trim down. Oh, <laughs> uh, all right. Pull from him tomorrow. I thought Zach was going to show up. I was going to try and get you guys get you both going but i was he was right behind me when i <laughs> drove over here but well i won't keep you i know you got your um, no, it's all good i might just go to the go to the bar and grab another beer i uh, i appreciate you coming by um well i would say call dj for a charter but he's exclusive now he runs just private and he's earned it he's um he's been working very hard for a long time he's got a good system now you happy with everything yeah got lucky how long did you run charters for uh, i mean when i was in high school i got my license so six years almost as long as i did and that was from high school. That's crazy. That's cool, man. I'm happy for you and proud of you, and um, hopefully you can make it by next time. We'll ride it out as long as it goes. <laughs> Until something changes. Got to roll with it. All right, so we have Captain Garrett Frey. You guys met him last time. Appreciate you yeah. coming down. Yeah. How are you doing? Good, good. Just got in from fishing a little bit ago. It was a little rocky out there today, but not as bad as everyone thought it was going to be. So I was pleasantly surprised that I didn't get just pounded out there today. I was wondering. I was. I went and saw. I was watching the jets this morning. And I was sitting on the beach watching the Whitecaps crash. I'm like, I'm glad I'm not fishing. And I was like, I think Garrett said he had a half day this morning or six hours. Yeah. yeah, I was out there rocking and rolling. I had a, a good buddy of mine who's 
getting married, so he was like, man, please take me fishing. I got all this wedding stuff. I was like, I got you, dude. I got you, I'll get you. We're going, we're going regardless. I was like, are you cool if it's rough? He's like, I don't even care. He's like, I don't have to deal with all the family <laughs> coming in and everyone else. Get me, off, he's like, get me off the land. <laughs> he was, oh, that's funny. Yeah, he, how, he's like, I could care less. How did it go? Good, good. We we got us some nice jacks, uh, mutton black. I tried for the APs for a while today, but just couldn't get one to eat. I caught like a dozen barracudas and jacks, but I just couldn't get yeah. the right one to eat it. So, Oh, I amber did. jacks? You getting yellow jacks? No. Do you ever get them on the Gosh, deep, deep I, racks? I, I, I used to a lot, but I haven't in the past few years at all. I used to There's, catch them randomly on the rubble or something or whatever. They're like... Um, they're like pelagic reef fish because they're like they're not reef fish but they're, they could be anywhere i've seen them like out in like 300 feet on nothing it's a crazy they're, they're the strangest fish but um but yeah it's an off what do you an offshore schooling jack <laughs> yeah. which so is a permit technically <laughs> people are like oh you got to catch them on the flats i'm like that's not where they even yeah, live no, I, no, almost never very rarely do i see them in there yeah, and they're looking for stone crabs they'll swim around me but um uh what else have you been doing this month what month are we in march April. <laughs> April we're, re now. we're recapping March. Oh, okay, yeah. Recapping so how, March. how was March for you? Good. Good. More APs? Yeah. Did you stay in I had a I had a really, really cool trip. Um, it was uh, a father and his like good buddy and then uh, each one of their sons. And they, the dads were like, we don't even care if we fish at all. So it was just me and their two sons and they were both younger. Uh, one of them was special needs and he was still killing. He only had like three quarters of use of one hand but he was hilarious and he was all about it he would got hold the up. rod with his wrist and he was going to oh, work that's awesome. we landed two and a half ap's that morning and a couple of jacks the third one that we got right behind the boat just got smoked by a bull and i was like all right boys it's time to go because like, <laughs> so if, if anything if, else we hook we're gonna feed to him like, if you're wondering what half an ap is that's what it means yeah it's, people are going what's two and a half man? yeah two's the limit and it means we'll, a shark ate one of the other i have half. a great picture of us holding two and a half <laughs> <laughs> i'm like well i'll take a picture with a half before i you had um not to interrupt you you had one you had a big one right yeah almost 30. yeah 27 and something that's a big it's a big ap um I mean, anything even near that 30 marks big. Your average fish is, what's your average, I mean, honestly, what do you think, 18, 20, maybe? Not even. A little less, An average, yeah. uh, I think right when they lose all the little trailers and stuff, they probably weigh like 13, 15 yeah. pounds. And that's usually, I get them where they're just, they just don't have all those trailers on them. A 27 ounce, a 27 pound AP is a big. Yeah, that's probably a, one of the biggest I've I've caught yeah. here. I, I, I spear them, which is an unfair advantage because when he's catching them he doesn't get to pick which well, yeah, ones you don't get to school. look at 30 of them like oh let that one i eat. pick i'm like yeah that one looks the biggest I've, I've been spearing them for 10 years and i have two that are over 30 pounds so that, that'll give you an idea of how how big a 27 pound was especially rod and reel um so what else has been going on i mean you like we talked about it last time for those of you that uh, didn't see last one Garrett mainly sticks to bottom fishing. Uh, a lot of guys are sail fishing right now. You don't do a ton of that because you're. I'll have the liveies out, but I haven't gotten one the no. past few days. I think it's there's so much competition right now. Like, DJ said it's been slow and everyone's hammering them. The, there's like now too with the the Vikings got their tournament yeah. and like everyone who's had the chance to be doing it. I mean, Bryce and Brad and Chris and even guys that usually will go further west are a little closer with two kites up and I'm there with one or two random threadies just sitting out there behind the boat like i don't have a really great chance against yeah. those guys you're, with two kites and six you, baits you'll and, hook them occasionally i hook them occasionally on accident but if you're sail fishing you got to sail fish like you got to put the time in and focus on them yeah um muttons been staying on those muttons have been okay not as good so many they black groupers even though know, i'm not trying I, know. <laughs> I'm, I mean they're there they're like but they're on the bottom like I'm, what are you gonna do yeah i'm edge of i'm edge of the, some of these wrecks and stuff and i'm 200 feet off of the yeah. like the hard structure and sure enough isn't that just, amazing they come still that far off of it they're just hungry yeah that's so wild um luckily we got counting the counting the days yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah well, may, may for may 1st rent well, yeah, is they, due they just closed they just closed western and all that was that's april 1st yeah so that yeah, western just dry closed. rocks closure yep and then yeah may 1st is Pretty much a QS national holiday. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's what I was saying. It's a holiday for me. <laughs> Fishermen like, look forward to May 1st like Christmas. Dude, I'm, I'm not kidding. More people <laughs> probably take off May 1st here than like the day after New Year's. Like New Year's yeah, Day. Yeah, yeah. That's like the, the oh, I'm so, sorry, boss. I'm not feeling very good. <laughs> yeah. You start you start pretending you're sick a day or two in advance to oh, take off though. May 1st. No, dude, May 1st is a holiday for sure. Um, something else I was going to ask you that kind of just came to mind because you always stay in the APs. This time of year, 
the permit go crazy on it. And they, they don't really eat. You ever hook them on cut bait? I mean, because if people are fishing for them, they're mainly doing crabs. Mm, I've only ever caught, I think, two or three permit on cut bait, and it's when I've been tarpon fishing. Oh, really? So I'm like chunking and the just okay. chunking the baits, and then I'll just stuff the hook in one and feed it back, sort of like yellow tail. Yeah, I didn't know I if you ever hooked them on the deeper X on accident because they stack up out there, man. If I, I'll find some footage. I've caught it. one on a vertical jig, and caught might be a strong word. Maybe I just smacked him it. with it. I don't know. I mean, it's a it's a vertical jig, so you, if you hook him in the face, you're like, oh, he tried to eat it. Yeah. So uh, maybe, but. I know they're starting to, st I mean, I'm sure there's a million of them on Western, but we can't fish there anymore. Yeah. Um, no, there are. They're all over the place. I just, I didn't know if you ever hooked them on accident. I mean, not much, not, not on like a piece of bonita or anything like that, or they never would eat, I don't think they'd ever eat a pinfish or something like that. Which is so crazy, just the difference in, because like, it's so similar to, like, obviously it looks so much different, but like, you think the way, their behavior, the way they hang out in schools on deep wrecks, you think they would eat like they African pumpkin whatever, do, yeah. but... They're picky. Normally it's what, crabs or big shrimp? Crab, shrimp. Um, they're just, they like the shellfish. That's about it. <laughs> That's funny. That's a funny, um, it's a funny fish. I, there's a, it's very highly debated. Like some people spear them. I don't spear them. Like if you think an, it's, it's like an African pompano met an, an amberjack. They will, they will wear you out. If you spear a big permit, like they're just, oh yeah, they're just solid. Cross muscle between a Jack Creval and, and an African yeah, pompano no, for sure because they, they got that they yellow. They wear you out. And then, uh, like I said, I think I said it earlier, this time of year they uh, close it down. It's April 1st, right? They April close permit. I don't ever in keep the SP, up, so I can't In the remember. SPZ, because we're in a special permit zone, it's, I, it's I different it than April. everywhere else, but I think you're right. It's April 1st to like can, July or something. You can something. keep like two of them up until April 1st, and then I think yeah. it's those first couple yeah. of months, and then... Anyways, we're kind of getting off on it. But yeah, you can't keep them right now, but they are everywhere, all over the place. Um, so what do you, I mean, April's more of the same, I guess, until the grouper opens for you, the same I'm stuff. I'm going to catch <laughs> so many blacks on accident for sure. Just, just all over the place. And, I, and diving, you just see them like crazy, and it's just, it's good though. I, I'm glad they closed it and needed it, because yeah. those spawning fish, I mean, and it's mainly the divers. Like, when they're spawning, they just they just sit there and swim around in a circle, and they look at you. It's like, it's, it's unfair. Yeah, they're, they're not definitely as... Uh... It's like anything in off season. You just, you know, the deer are running yeah. around everywhere. Yeah, until it's in the rut. Season. Yeah, exactly. It's like <laughs> everybody's super friendly during the spawn. Yeah. Exactly. I wonder one day if they'll do something similar with mutton snapper. If they'll close it for like two months, like uh, fully or something. I'm honestly surprised that they haven't. Me too. Um, you don't know. I've been saying that for years that they're gonna. They, I knew they were gonna eventually close Western. Like there was whispers about that for yeah. a long time, and now yeah. I'm been like. I'm surprised they don't close mutton for like May and June for two months and you know, it only would need to be two but they'll do four yeah. for some reason and everyone will yeah. lose so, their mind. So Western, uh, he's saying, he says Western, Western Dry Rocks is an area around here, very popular fishing spot, um, very controversial decision, they closed it four months out of the year during June spawn. and July, yeah, April, May, June and July. Yeah, April, May, June, July, they close it, uh, a lot of species do spawn there, which is good for certain species but uh, there's... It's highly debated. Depends who you ask. Um, but that's when, when he's saying Western, that's where he's referring to. Um, I'm trying to think. There was something else I was going to ask you. I can't remember. Um, anything else come to mind? Any, any cool catches? I mean, other than that big African pompano. Yeah. Anything uh, else come to mind? Gosh, it's been some cool days. The it's... black groupers I see you release, and I'm just like, oh, yeah. like big ones, too. Yeah, they've been so nice. With, I got just a big one this morning, probably 25 -ish. Oh, God. So, yeah, I'd say 25 pounder. I mean, that's like a trophy fish. It's like people, like, like, people oh, yeah. fish like that. A black, you know, like a, a black grouper of 2020 is, I mean, uncommon for most people. And it was funny because my buddy, we'd already caught a few jacks, like 30s, 40, and he's like, oh man, this one doesn't feel nearly as big. And he brings it, and he's like, oh, it's a smaller one. I was like, but it's way cooler. It's way cooler. I'm like, that's a lot more special. It gave like, up halfway up. I'm like, this is a, I'm like, this is killing me to let it go because I know how <laughs> awesome this would be for lunch. But in a month, one more month, I can oh, wait. Oh man. Well, um, you got any availability coming up in April? Yeah, quite a bit. I know most weekends in April I've got booked like Saturdays and Sundays, but a lot of middle of the week stuff I've still got. If people want to get in on the grouper stuff, how's May looking for you? It's a lot really open. Really? Honestly. Yeah. Quite okay. a bit in May and June is still still really open for me. Um, if you want to catch some fish, give Garrett a call. All in charters. Phone number? 574-238-8963. Uh, you can call or text me either way.
Hey, we'll put you on the fish. No fish, no pay. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Appreciate you coming by. Thank you, man. Always a good this time. This is super fun to do again, man. All righty, we have Captain Zach Freeman. You guys know him. Appreciate you coming by, yeah, sir. Um, so what's the latest? What have you been doing? March. Well, since we got done talking last time, we finished Kingfish season off. Yeah. And that ended on a roll. We had four or five good days of limits there. And then it. my month actually picked up out of nowhere. I went from having like three, four trips to I think I did 12, 14 trips. A really? Month. Yeah. So, um, let that pass over. We do a little bit of everything, man. A little bit of everything. Uh, from sailfish to uh, shark fishing in the flats and the mud flats. Yeah. Um, and the mullet mud, putting the kite up and watching the sharks kind of air out on the. That's actually pretty uh, cool. On, on, the, on the mullet and stuff. Makes you feel like a kid again. Yeah. And it's just stuff, you know, we just don't get to do often. But. It's whatever but, the clients want. Yeah. That and whatever the condition gives us. Yeah. Yeah. You sometimes know, you got to make do with what's going on. It's, if it's blowing 20 and you still want to go and you don't want to get beat up, that's like, you know, that's our option there. Which is what the spring is known for. Yeah. Windy. And then out back, it's been good big lane snappers. The muttons are starting to push through out back there. I that's think. what DJ was saying. Yeah, it's it, it was good the other day. Yeah. Very good. Have you had um, any shark trouble back there? Yes. So you said it was bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other day, we pulled a few off right at the boat, dropped a tip, hook came out, and then <clears throat> the dad, because I had a bunch of kids with him. Yeah. The dad hooks one, gets him rocked up. Gets him out. Gets him rocked up again. <laughs> gets him out, and I'm like, man, if we get this thing, it, uh, you know, I'm gonna be pretty excited for the guy. And of course, as he's, right as I can see the fish, eight foot lemon shark devours oh him. Oh my gosh, the lemons are the worst. Everyone's always talking about the bulls, man. I have more trouble with the lemons than anything. Yeah, I feel like. I mean, obviously the bulls are aggressive too, but it's like the more run-ins I have, the, the lemons are more like spunky and just out of nowhere. Yeah, the bulls, you know what they're doing. Like, hey, we're here. We're gonna ruin your day. The lemons are just sneaky. Anyway, yeah. sorry. Go ahead. Oh, that's basically been the gist of it. I got, I got to sail fish today, which I'm excited about. We got. How, how did it, how many did you how many did you, what you guys call land? I don't do a ton of sail fishing, but no. Well, DJ I, said it's been so so. Depending, he said it hadn't had that like big run yet. So with me, there's only so much I could do with one boat, or with one boat with one guy on the boat running it. Um, technically. That, really want to have a mate yeah sail fishing's complicated unless you get the right wind and you could stay on the edge of that color change and, and work it but um we had one fish that we landed we hooked another spit the hook on us and uh a couple cutoffs and stuff but that's to be expected i don't yeah. know whether it was kingfish or and that's all kite fishing no, yeah that, that no was sight stuff no 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 it was so rough that day like it part of the roughest day of the month and they still were very gung ho about going. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, we made it happen. I was when I ran charters. You got one warning and then the bill. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be really, really, really windy. Like we still want to go. Like, all right, you well, said it. This, I, you got your warning. It from all the captain. It, it all depends on how rough it is on how many warnings you get. <laughs> like twenty to twenty-five, you get one warning. We go. When it's like twenty-eight, I'm like. Hey guys, are you extra sure? Extra sure. I'm going to need you to sign this waiver here. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, you had some beefy yellowtails you yeah. sent me a picture of. Yeah. What was that? Were you sandballing? No, chumming? Just, just chumming. Chumming. We gave it time. You know, I had a uh, father son on that trip. Very good fisherman. Um, it took us forever in the morning to get bait. It took us two and a half hours of the trip oh on a six gosh. hour. Yeah. And I wanted, I wanted to have some filters just in case. Hold on one second. And uh, wanted to have filters just in case. Just in case. I didn't even use any. Oh yeah. Yeah, I didn't end up using them. I had enough to throw on like maybe a drift or two after we got done fishing uh, the reef. But you know, the bite ended up being so good for the yellowtail. Were you deep? I wasn't about 90 feet. 90 feet. 90 feet. But we had the good westbound tide. The only thing that. Uh, would have liked was the water be a little dirtier but i heard it's been pretty clear yeah it's been pretty clear which is not um, good for fishing for the most part depending yeah. on what you're doing yeah but like refishing bottom refishing fishing. now yeah you don't want clean water nope and uh but you do want that west tide but the guy was a really good fisherman i was able to go light on the leader i was able to go with 16 bare hook 
we had patience, we waited, and uh, once we got one, of the, there was one trigger fish that was eating, <laughs> eating the bait, and you could see the yellowtail back there, and he beat him to it, of course, as usual, but once he... They're always so funny, they're like little ninjas, just they pick it off, and you don't even know that they ate it. Oh yeah, I went with like a size four, and then we got him hooked, and got him to the boat. <laughs> That's so put an end to that. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, this is the time, I think it was last year, we were just catching just roots, like four or four and a half pounders. Yeah. The yellowtails. I, th um, I think my biggest one was close to four. Yeah, the, the, the picture you sent me, they looked, I mean, you had, that was the day you had the big yellow jacket. Yeah, yeah. Those fish just looked huge. There's something about them, it's just, after a certain point, the yellowtails go from just reeling in a snapper to like it's like you're fighting something big. Like a mutt. Like yeah, they, start feel, they yeah. start to feel more muttony. When you, uh, when you close that bale and you come tight to him and you have to stop because he's. Yeah. Ah, yeah. He starts running yeah. away with a little bit. You're like, all right. A little bit of digs. All oh, right. man, that's cool. I got to get out there and do that. Um, that big yellowtail. So fun. It's so fun. And then when you bring that kind of fillet home. It's like it's like a small mutton snapper. You know yeah, what I mean? No, it it, it, it's a good fillet. It's a good meat. Holds up better than that 12 inch. Yeah, oh, yellow absolutely. Tail They're really brittle, does. really delicate, nice thick. Love them big yellow tails. I've actually been eating a lot more fish. Have you really? Yeah, I think I'm on. I have four days last week. I actually ate fish. No. I swear. I swear. Zach doesn't eat a lot of fish. No, not at all. But one uh, time I invited him to a fish tasting. <laughs> yeah. Cook. You're like, I don't eat fish. I was like, what? Yeah. How did I not know this? No. I feel like you used to. Back when we lived in Alamanda, you did. Yeah, I didn't feel like cooking it though. Yeah. Uh, that was you, you guys that were frying it all up for me. You ate it because that's what there was to eat. That's what there was to eat. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, so April, what do you foresee? Have you done any permit yet? I know they're starting to stack up. I tried one day, that same exact day that took forever to catch bait. We sat and waited for the permit to pop up for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Didn't happen. Went and bought a fish. Yeah. And. Oh, that's what else I meant to ask you. Finish your thought and then I had something else. I just, no, I haven't. Between weather and kind of knowing what the people want, you know, it's been, let's go catch snappers and stuff yeah, for dinner type thing. You gotta do what's good. And a, lot, yeah. and a lot of times, I mean, I remember when I was chartering and people were like, we wanna do this. Well, sometimes you gotta listen to your captain. What you want may not be happening. A good captain's gonna tell you what's been biting and kind of steer you in that direction. Yeah, well, it was not even that really. I mean, cause everything's kind of pretty good right now. Yeah. I'm it, saying in certain scenarios. It, yeah, but, but it, it's good enough to get by on pretty much anything right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, um, so the bait, everyone's been, has everyone still been struggling pretty hard the last oh yeah. month? Oh yeah. you, there, I mean, you, there was what, a couple days uh, what, I was what catching What is your it, opinion on that? Do you think, I mean, is it, did it get, is it because it got warmer? Is it, do you think something going on with that spinning fish thing? Possibly. I don't know. Because right. it did, it like a, it just out of nowhere, just a, the bait abandoned the flats. I saw some in the back country and then maybe some in the deeper channels. Have you been, the, not like, don't give me locations, but yeah. have you been able to find any? Yeah, but not not in the shallows. They've been not in, what, you, in, not in what the, you're used to. Yeah, not what I'm used to. But it's getting that time of year where it's gonna be that deeper channel situation. Up a little bit. Yeah. Makes you wonder though, because I mean, I feel like it was, because I think last time we talked, last report, it was the same story. I think it was right when everyone, because everyone stopped tuna fishing because no one could catch bait. And a lot of it, I think, has to do with the amount of pressure that we're getting right yeah. now. It's got, once bait pops up somewhere, there's five, six boats on yeah. it the next day. Yeah, you know? of course they're going to move. Yeah, and that's true. Between the birds, us, it's just, they're, they're bound to move. It's got to stink being a bait fish. Yeah. It's not fun being a bait fish. <laughs> I'm just out to get you Ugh. all the time. All the time. From the air, from the sea. Yeah, they don't last. They don't <laughs> last. Um... I think that's about all I have yeah. for as far as my questions. Um, two questions. Oh, that's what I'm not through. April's availability, how's it looking? And then if anyone wants early early grouper. So early grouper, we talked about it, hot numbers. How's your, how's your beginning the of May? First, the first two weeks, I think I have three days open. Three days open? Yeah. So grouper, everyone goes nuts. A lot of the captains are gonna be booked. Um, so we got a couple in May, April. Yeah. I was always slowest in April because it's like, the Wahoo are slowing down. Grouper's not open yet. The mutton should be heating up though. On the, yeah. The deep mutton should be. Yeah. The spawning fish. The spawning fish are going to start showing up, and uh, I'm hoping a couple of areas I found last year were kind of like a pre-spawn before. Yeah. Those are the uh, best ones. The little, oh. the little 
quiet ones are known yep. that. And you can Nobody's catch there. Just pluck a few a day, leave them alone. No, I'm not not a lot of pressure. Yeah, the ones with the least amount of pressure are the yeah. best ones. Um, April, I've got uh, probably got another 12 days open. Okay. Cool. But you know, four of those it. days are the sailfish tournament with okay. DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got a couple other random things in, in awesome. there that are just blocked off. Family. Cool family stuff and we'll love to hear it um if anyone wants to book you phone number phone number 305-849-3098 website all all. real fresh fishing fishrealfresh.com yeah <laughs> you you flipped it and it confused me uh, the instagram is real fresh fishing the website is fish real fresh was yeah. it taken i think so the website yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. well i think i it was two years Anyways, now. it's on the screen. Yeah, it's on the, it'll be on the <laughs> I screen. Swear. But I think the name was too long. I was like, I don't like that. It's too Never long. mind, it doesn't look, <laughs> look right. Oh, man. Well, thanks so much, yeah, seriously. Man. Appreciate you. Yeah. And uh, I'll see you next month. Well, I'll see you before then. But yeah, they'll see, see you next month. Yeah, we'll see you. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. All righty, and that is all we have. Um, I had some other guys that were going to stop by. I've been trying to get some flats guides and dive boats. I actually would like to get a trolling boat on here as well. Um, but schedules are hard to align. Uh, these guys work every single day, so it's, it's very difficult to get everyone out here. But um, next time we'll work on that, getting some other uh, style fishermen out here. Uh, I think that's all I have. Big, big thanks to the docks on Stock Island. Again, if you're looking for a snack, a drink, fancy cocktail, have a nice dinner, um, come check it out. The docks on Stock Island. It's one of our favorite places, uh, and I can't thank them enough for giving us the space to do this. But that is all I have. Appreciate feedback if you want to leave some, and uh, I will see you on the next one. Later.